Good evening and welcome to Times Square Church. Welcome to our worldwide prayer meeting. We're so glad to be in your house tonight and for those of you in the house, as we're here on the campus of our Bible School, Summit International School of Ministry, we're here to worship the Lord. And wherever you are, whatever your day looked like, let's just take a moment and offer up a heart of thanks to the Lord. He is worthy of our praise and we invite him tonight just to come and have his way. Whatever prayer requests we're bringing, we know we serve a God that is big and a God that is great. Amen? Let's worship the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We worship you, Jesus.
Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If you're in your living room, stand up and give him a hand clap of praise. He set us free and we are free indeed. Thank you, Lord. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. We thank you for freedom tonight, oh God. Freedom, oh God. We thank you, God, that no matter what the enemy roars, you say we are free, oh God. Let the truth of your word speak tonight, oh God. Lord, let your truth be louder, God, than the sound of everything around us, oh God. You have called us free. You call us son and daughter. Your voice is truth, oh God. And we thank you. No more shackles, no more chains. Thank you, God. This is who you are, and this is what you do. Just sing a song of praise to the Lord. Tell him how good he is, how faithful he is. You're so worthy of our praise, oh God. You're so worthy, Jesus. We love you, God. We love you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great
praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, oh Lord. Let's see it out. And all the earth, all the earth will shout. Let our hearts cry. Good evening, everyone who's tuning in, and all of us that are here in this house. Tonight has been on my heart to pray for marriages that are struggling. There's so many marriages, Christian marriages that are struggling. But I also know that God stands behind families. God stands behind marriage because it's instituted by Him. And that's why I believe there's so many attacks have been on marriage. I've known families that were on the verge of divorce. And I know that the body of Jesus Christ were praying and miracles happened. No longer they wanted to divorce, but they came to a moment and, and forgiving each other. And, and healing started to happen in the marriages. And now they're beautiful marriages that are flourishing in Christ. Because without him, we cannot do this. But with him, all things are possible. And I just want to encourage you tonight not to give up. But together, we're going to be praying for your marriage, for God to do a miracle. Noana from New York is writing and says, My marriage is unstable and threatening to collapse. I just got married in the church six months ago. I have a feeling that my husband is cheering on me. From Edward from Ohio, please pray for me and my family. My wife of 26 years filed for divorce. She's left for another married man. I prayed, fasted, and cried for wife and children to God for two years now, and things only are getting worse. Ruben from Sweden, please keep praying for my husband who has left the Lord and me. Many have tried talking to him. Many have prayed, but no change. Lord, my eyes are on you. Chini from Africa, please pray for my marriage, for restoration and reconciliation, trust and the rekindling of love. He wants a divorce, but I don't. Pray for our children. Anne from UK, it's been a year since my husband left me and cheated on me. He has cut me off from his life and has fallen away from God. Please pray for miracle and wisdom. And we're going to stand tonight praying for all of these families and other families that are writing in. For God to come and heal your marriage, touch your marriage. And for God to come and bring love again, to rekindle the love and commitment to each other. And more than everything, for God to come and, and just make our hearts soft again. And to be able to forgive and cover each other as he covered and forgave us.
Father we come to you tonight we pray oh Lord for a miracle Lord you know these people that are writing in their brothers and sisters they're the body of Jesus Christ from all over the world people are writing in and asking for a miracle in their home for marriage for such a sacred thing that the enemy is coming to destroy and kill and steal but Lord we come to you because you're a restorer and we come to you for you to restore marriages now for you to restore the love the commitment that once took place father I pray that you bring the marriages back together you heal them supernaturally you bring hope again forgiveness and reconciliation I pray, oh God, that children rising up in these families, they're not going to be fatherless or without moms. Lord, but these children that are rising in this family, that are growing up, that they will know that you have done a miracle. And they will have a testimony in their life that you have done a miracle in their parents' life. Lord, we have enough broken families in this world. Lord, I pray that you come and touch the house of the Lord. Touch the church of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. We are your bride. And it's a resemblance of us and you, oh Father, I pray that you come and do miracles. Hallelujah. Oh Father, we pray for Nana. We pray for her marriage, oh Lord, that six months ago she has come to church and committed her life one to another. But six months later she's finding out that her husband is cheating on her. Lord, would you come and touch this man, whatever he is, right now. And do a miracle in the name of Jesus. Comfort her, oh God. Lord, let her not lose hope in you, oh Father. But let this situation turn her even closer to you. Believing and trusting in you that you will do a miracle. Oh God, I also pray for Edward from Ohio. God, I pray that you come and bring healing and restoration in this marriage. That you don't allow the divorce to go through. That you don't allow for this corruption to go in the hearts of people. But Lord, expose the wicked things, the wicked ways from the heart of man. And all of these things you would do in mercy and in kindness to bring restoration. Oh God, I pray also for Reuben from Sweden. God, I pray that you do a miracle in this marriage as well. Father, as many are praying, as she's saying... We are coming tonight and praying for this family as well. That you come and restore and heal this marriage as well. Lord, we pray for China from Africa. God, I pray that you come and rekindle the love that it's the only can come from you. And she's asking for this love to come from above. Oh Lord, she's also asking for the divorce paper not to go through. I pray in the name of Jesus that you do a miracle. A miracle. God, I've heard a few weeks ago that a family that were going to a divorce court court on the way there they forgiven each other and they ripped up the papers of divorce you can do a miracle on the way to the court when people are trying to be be away one from another but you can come and bring reconciliation forgiveness and healing God, I also pray from and from UK. God, I pray that you come and heal this marriage as well. Would you comfort them? Would you come and bring hope? Would you come, oh Lord, and just bring supernatural forgiveness in their hearts? Lord, ultimately, would you humble all of our hearts before you? Because selfishness and pride is causing so many issues in marriage. But you cause us now to serve one another as you served us, oh Lord, by dying on a cross to redeem us and to call us your own help us oh father now as husbands for us to die to ourselves and to serve our spouses God I pray that you do this miracle that can only be birthed by the power of the Holy Spirit because it is a church it is we are one body it is we are one one body that is in you father and it is a picture of a church here on earth. And we pray and fight tonight and believe for a miracle. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Roger, would you come and continue praying for families? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for an open heaven today. We thank you for your word that teaches us, O oh God, to come and to fight, O oh God. And not to give up hope, oh God. He said, let every man pray 
and not faint, O oh God. Today we're asking you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you put your sword in our hand, O oh God, that you would teach us to fight, Almighty God, that you put a spirit of a warrior, the spirit of Christ in our hearts, O oh God, to care, O oh God, for those who are hurting and to fight and to stand up against, O oh God, hell, and to believe you for miracle, O oh God. Father, I just remember that when you told uh, Elisha told that man to strike the ground, he should have struck it many times. I pray tonight you would hear many prayers, O oh God, strike striking heaven's door, O oh God, on behalf of those who are hurting, O oh God, those who are confused, O oh God. Hear the cry of your people tonight, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we strike heaven's door by faith, O oh God. And we ask you to break the spirit of rebellion. You to rebe you'd break, O oh God, every unbelief, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Almighty God, where hell has come in, O oh God, even in Moses' time, O oh God, and he said, aha, I got you. And, O oh God, Moses just lifted up that cross, that's that uh, stick, oh God. And we lift up Christ, we lift up the promises of God that we have in you tonight, oh God. And we ask tonight, oh God, that you would break the lies that come to the mind that say it's impossible, but we know with you all things are possible, oh God. Hallelujah, mighty God. Hallelujah, mighty God. Thank you, Father, that with you all things are possible. So we ask, oh God, Lord, you even said, oh God, if we know the truth, that that truth will follow us all of our days, oh God. So, oh God, where they've heard the truth, wherever they're running to flee from the truth, we pray your truth would follow and pursue them and make them miserable. Lord, you said the wages of sin is death. Let them taste and see, oh God, that their way brings death, oh God. But, oh God, your hand is still stretched out to them, saying, return to me. Why will you die? Come and live, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you'd heal these relationships and these families, oh God. Strengthen the heart of your believers, not to give up, oh God, to stay but to stand and to believe, oh God, that you're going to do a miracle for them, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Strengthen their faith, oh God, no matter what hell says in their mind, whatever thought comes to them, that they refuse to believe hell and they choose to believe their God. Tonight I ask this, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, and I thank you, holy God. Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus' thank name. You, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Cause there's no prison wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move, all things are possible, yes, there's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible.
Praise God. Praise God. I want to read a few prayer requests that we've received. First one from Jason in Lloydminster, Canada. TSC family, please pray for my wife, Mary. She previously had cancer and now has a lesion on her liver. Please, please, please pray for a miracle. Thank you. Elaine in Ayrshire, Scotland, UK. I am broken, lost, depressed, addicted, and falling, failing as a mom. I'm struggling to find any joy at all. Please pray for me and help me find my way back to God. Please, uh, Kay from Birwa, Australia. Please pray for Debbie as she goes through chemo. She has literally poured out her life for the poor and started a food bank to the glory of God. Thanks. Uh, Alice from Singapore, Singapore says, please pray for my son, TT, USA, uh, to surrender his life to God again and enable him to love his family with the love of Jesus in truth and in spirit. And then one more from Holon, Israel. Um, someone's asking, please pray for my friend E, who is in pain now. May the Lord heal her with miracles. And in all of these prayers, you know, we receive so many prayer requests. So they are so diverse. All I know is I, I want to say thank you for everyone that takes the time to send in a prayer request every week. It is not a light thing. We do not lightly esteem the fact that you take the time to type in your prayer requests and send them in and believe. And it is a great honor and privilege for us to stand with you in the place of prayer to lift up these prayer requests. And as diverse as these prayer requests are, so is the power of God. And he is so ready to display. Play it, and I'm so happy to stand with you in prayer. I just want to read a psalm, um, Psalm 121, and I want to pray. And then uh, one of our church members is going to come up here and pray with me, Miss Terry Ann. But Psalm 121, there's a heading on it that says, "God is the help of those who seek Him." It says, "I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help?" My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And I just want to remind everyone, our God is not asleep even in the midst of our struggles. Sometimes we've been praying for a long time. We've been waiting for answers or things are still happening. But remember tonight, Jesus said, in this world we will have tribulation but be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. He has overcome every struggle we will have. Um, in, in verse 5, he continues, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in <clears throat> from this time forth and even forevermore. Lord, we just want to pray tonight, and I want to invite everyone in the sanctuary here to pray with me. Lord, we turn our eyes to you, Lord God. We look to you, mighty God, enthroned in heaven, and en en enthroned in majesty. All power, all authority is with you, and you have given us the name of Jesus to call upon that name, the name that is above every name, the name that is above every type of circumstance, the name that is above every label, the name that is above every Every situation we can be facing Lord and you remind us even through this beautiful psalm he who keeps Israel and he who keeps us is not sleeping is not slumbering God and we look to you Lord we look to you tonight tonight with fresh faith we look to you tonight Lord with fresh hope we look to you tonight Lord that you are where our help comes from it doesn't come from man it doesn't even come from what we can do Lord sometimes we have tried everything but prayer we've tried everything but getting on our knees and humbling ourselves before you and, tur and turning to you and calling on your name. But Lord, for these who wrote in these prayer requests tonight, Lord, this man praying for his wife, Jason, Lord, we pray for the cancer that in his is in his wife's body, Lord God. Lord, we just bring that illness to you, Lord, and we pray for a divine healing from heaven, Lord God, that you would stretch out your hand over her body, Father. 
And Lord, let them see your faithfulness once again, oh God. Lord, I pray for this woman, Elaine. I understand where she's coming from, Lord, to know that she's broken and she's lost. And God, we hear the humility in her prayer, even that she's admitting that she knows her situation, Lord. But there's no pit too deep, Lord, that you cannot reach into and pull people out of God. And so we thank you, Lord. You will meet her in her brokenness, Lord, and turn her back to you, God. May she repent, Lord, of her sins, God. And may you restore her, God, back to fellowship with you, Lord. I pray for sweetness to return to her prayer life, God. I pray, Lord, at the utterance of your name, God, your presence will come in and comfort her, Father. God, we just lift up the name of Jesus over all of these prayers. And, Lord, we remind those who are praying with us tonight, indeed, you are the God of those who seek you, those who are calling on your name, and that we are, we are wise, God, to put our hope in you and our trust in you again, Oh God, and look to you for help, Lord. Even in the midst of the most difficult of circumstances, God, we will hope until the end, Lord. You always have the final word. You always have the final say, Father. And so we thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You are faithful. We declare you faithful tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord God. Praise you, Father. You are a good, good Father. Lord, you are a good shepherd. Father, you call your sheep into your fold, Lord God. And that's not just getting saved, God. It's, it's staying close to you because you are the good shepherd. Oh, God, I know, I know that it is your desire, Lord God, for your, your sons and your daughters, Lord God, to, to continue to get into that secret place, Lord. Um, Father, you are our help. You are our help. Oh, Father, I pray for the people who are writing in, Lord. My heart was so touched earlier as I was reading the, the prayers, Lord. People are praying out of, of, out of such, asking for prayers, Lord, out of such desperation, Lord. They need answers. Lord, you are the answer. You, you have everything we need, Father God. You, you have every answer. You, you, you have deliverance for us, Lord. Those that are addicted and, and asking, please pray for me. I, you know, God, you are the answer, and I pray that you would work upon the hearts of these people, Lord, who, who are asking to be filled with joy, who, who are asking to be set free from depression, who, who need jobs, Lord God, who, who have desperate situations in their family lives, Lord God. I pray that all these people writing in, Lord, will sense your gentle, loving voice will hear your voice even right now lord uh father as you call us you call these people you you call everyone who has a need lord you're you're calling us into your secret place you have the answers in the secret place and it starts with Father, with us just coming into that quiet place with you. And I pray that as, even if people think they can't do that, I pray, Father, for your peace to cover their minds right now, cover their hearts. Lord, if they feel like, well, I'm writing in because I can't do this myself, I'll ask somebody else to do it. That's good. That's awesome. There's an army of people praying with you if you have written in. An army of people. And the Lord wants to answer your prayer, and the Lord is answering your prayer right now. He's answering your prayer, but he longs for a relationship with you. He longs for you to seek his face. Oh, God, bless your people. Bless your people, Lord God. I ask, I ask for great things for everybody who has written in, Lord. Great things in Jesus' name, an outpouring of your love, an outpouring of your peace, Lord, that they will, will feel that joy once again, Lord. Even before the answer to their prayer has come, there will be an expectation in their heart, Lord God, knowing that you are a good, good father and that you answer the cry of your children. Thank you, Father.
Amen. Tonight, we're going to pray for those um, who sent him prayer requests, asking for salvation for their friends, their family, their loved ones. We have a request here from Ireland that says, please pray that our precious daughter will fall in love with Jesus. May she hear his loving voice calling her and surrender her life to God's love. Another request from Ireland says, please pray for our daughter-in-law that she would love Jesus and turn to him again. Pray for their girls that they would be kept. Thank you, TSC. Another one from Utah. My daughter is severely depressed and not saved. I'm terrified. We will find her dead one day. I can't go see her, and she has isolated herself. Please pray. Praying for deliverance for your daughter tonight. Then from Sweden. Please pray for the salvation of my brother, my brother-in-law, his mom, and the rest of his family, and mom-in-law and the rest of her family. God is faithful. You know, Mark 5 is such an encouraging chapter when it comes to the hope that we have in Jesus and the hope that we have in Jesus not only for ourselves but our loved ones. And in this one chapter, Jesus comes into contact with three different individuals, each from a completely different walk of life, a completely different background. Number, first off, he runs into the demoniac. This man represents maybe the person that's too far gone that impossible case in your family or, or friend. Um, in the story, that this man was so far gone that all the people could do was put chains on him. That was their solution, and that couldn't bring deliverance to him. Those couldn't even hold him down. But that was their only solution. It represents that person that's too far gone. Then there was Jairus, who was the ruler of the synagogue, and he came to Jesus because his 12-year-old daughter was sick and was dying. And this man maybe represents that person that seemingly has it all together. They're religious, they have a good job, they have respect in the community. And then lastly, a woman approaches Jesus and it's the woman with the issue of blood representing the person that maybe knows that they have a problem. They know that they need something but the text says that she had seen so many different doctors and couldn't find the answer anywhere and then finally she found Jesus. But here's what I love is by the end of the chapter, all three people, the Bible says all three people fell at the feet of Jesus. And I think that most people probably fall into one of these three categories, the too far gones, the have it all togethers, and the looking for answers. But I thank God that 
Jesus was able to reach every single one of them. So whatever category your loved one falls in, whatever category your family member, your friend falls in, we're gonna pray for them tonight. And not only that, but maybe you're not the person praying for someone else's salvation. Maybe you're listening tonight or you, you found this randomly two weeks from now and you're the one that needs to find salvation. We're praying for you tonight. I pray that the love of God, the grace of God would arrest your heart in the name of Jesus. So wherever you're at, whether it's here in the sanctuary, in your living room, lift up your voices. What, who's that one person that you're praying for tonight? Heavenly Father, we lift up our friends, we lift up our family members, our loved ones who are far from you. God, and I thank you that in this one text, this one text of Mark chapter five, you display the power that you have over every situation that separates us from God. God, whether it's, it, it, it's, we, it's our mind and, and we're so far gone that it just takes a miracle from heaven to bring us to God. Maybe it's those that think that they have it all together and they, they have everything that this world can offer and, and they don't see a need for God. Maybe it's the person who is just looking everywhere for answers and they can't find it. God, I pray that we would find salvation. I pray that they would find salvation in Jesus tonight. God, I pray for those that are, that are praying for their loved ones. Lord, I pray that they wouldn't take on the burden of salvation that only you bear. God, I pray that the, the burdens that only you can bear, that those would be released into your hands tonight. God, but the, the burden that's light, the burden that's found in Christ, the burden that's found in, in simply lifting others up and releasing them into your hands. God, I pray for, for that peace to follow that peace to fall on those that are praying for family members that, that have loved ones that are so far from you. God, I lift up that impossible case. God, every single person in this room listening and online, myself, we all have them. We all have that one person that we wanna believe that they can find salvation, but there's just something in our heart that says, this, man, this person's too far gone. God, we're believing for their salvation tonight. God, we're believing for their salvation. Lord, and I pray for that person online that's listening that hasn't given their life to you. God, I pray that right now in this moment that you would arrest their attention, that you would arrest their attention, God, that you would show them your love, that you would show them your grace, that you would show them your mercy, that the conviction of the Holy Spirit would rest upon them right now, God, and that like the three individuals in this story, they would fall down at the feet of Jesus and surrender their life to God and be born again. God, we thank you for all your goodness in our lives. We thank you for what you're gonna do, and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Join with us as we go into our time of giving. Each week, we love to let you know how your giving is making a difference around the world. And today we want to celebrate and thank you, Times Square Church, for your generosity in supporting an amazing organization right here in New York City called Love Life. Love Life is an organization that is working to unite and mobilize the church to create a culture of love and life that will bring an end to abortion. Not only are we able to help Love Life financially, but we even have a group of people from Times Square Church that serve with Love Life each week on the streets of New York City to be the light of Jesus for when people need it the most. The director and founder of Love Life, Justin Reeder, wanted to personally thank you, TSC, for all that you're doing to support Love Life. Times Square Church, thank you so much for supporting the mission and the vision of Love Life to see the Church of Jesus Christ unite and mobilize to create a culture of love and life that would result to an end to abortion and the orphan crisis. Your support financially and with your people has helped us mobilize to abortion clinics here in New York City and around the five boroughs, as well as around the nation and even the world as we are sending people to Israel. You guys are supporting and helping make that happen. We have seen thousands of lives that have been saved as there has been a Christian witness present at abortion mission fields, offering the hope of Jesus and the help of the local church. Thank you for standing with us. This is just the beginning. Times Square Church, thank you for your continued generosity and prayers each and every single week that allows us to work with amazing organizations like Love Life to help bring hope and healing to people. If you are prepared to give today, I wanted to remind you that there are four ways to give. 
You can give online at tsc.nyc slash give. You can text give TSC NYC to 77977. You can download the PushPay app or mail your check to our office. Thanks again, TSC, for being such a generous church. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. I was lost without hope, with no place to begin. But then your love made a way to let mercy come in. That's when death, that's when death was arrested and my life began. As ash, as ash was remained, only beauty remained. And this orphan heart was given in me. Oh, in morning grew quiet and my feet rose to dance. That's when death was arrested. From my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom, faithfully. We cancel my debt, we cancel my debt, and he called me. Rejoices though heaven had lost. We know what happens next. Let them see.
you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. you. May be seated here in the sanctuary and those who are at home too as well. And uh, we're believing that tonight this song is going to become a reality for you. The night that death was arrested and your life begins anew in Christ. Thank God. We're going to have communion after the uh, short sharing of God's Word tonight. And so if you have an opportunity to get some bread and some juice at home or some crackers, whatever you have, and you can partake of communion together with us where we celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ through which we are given the promise of eternal life in heaven and a full and abundant life here on this earth while we remain here until he takes us home. So that's communion time this evening after the sharing of God's Word. If you have, uh, if you'd like to just, we'd love to know, we'd love to hear from you out there. We know there are people all over the world that are part of this prayer meeting, and uh, if you could just contact us at testimony, testimony at tsc.nyc, and just let us know that you'd like to send us a video greeting. Could be just a small 60 minute, or uh, 60 minutes, 60 second rather, small 60 minute, a 60 second greeting on your cell phone. And we'd like to put it up on the screen just so that uh, people from around the world uh, could realize that there, there are individuals and groups everywhere. You might have a testimony you'd like to share just a couple of minutes long. But if you'll email in to testimony at tsc.nyc, then we'll be in touch with you and tell you how you can record that and upload that so that we might be able to display it on Tuesday night on a regular basis. We'll just put different people up on the screen and uh, get a chance to greet you who are with us out there as well. And for everybody who's uh, online uh, this evening, or might, you might be seeing this a- after the fact tonight, but if you're in the uh, area, the Summit Campus Church is open on Tuesday night, and you're more than welcome. The community are welcome to come in and pray with us. We'd love to have you here with us, uh, with those of us who are here in the sanctuary. So you're all invited Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time to roughly about 8.30. There's lots of parking, lots of space, and lots of friends and lots of hospitality here. So we'd love to have you. For those that are at home too as well, we encourage you after the meeting every Tuesday night to stay in your living room or wherever, wherever it is, if there's a, a one or two or more of you, and pray for one another that you might be filled with the Spirit of God. We recognize that only God's Holy Spirit can give us the power not only to stand but to make a difference in this particular generation we're now living in. We need the power of God's Holy Spirit. So stay and pray and just seek Him. Just say, God, give us your Holy Spirit. Keep it simple and just open your heart to what God is willing to do for you. Now, if you turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 55, I want to share with you a thought tonight. And it's really just simple. Come, all ye weary. Everyone who's tired. And there's so many people online this evening and throughout this week that are just at the end of, of your, your own efforts to, to find a way out of your dilemma or to find the strength that you believe that God wants to give to you, I want to encourage you to trust God tonight. So, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for your holy word, which indeed is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Thank you, Lord, for the strength that you are willing to give to people who are with us this evening and be with us throughout the week, Lord, I just ask you now for the great privilege of stretching your hand out, my God, through the internet, and start to bring power and deliverance and healing and victory into so many lives of so many that are turning to you at this time, this darkened time in this world. God, we want to be a living testimony for Christ, but we recognize that it's only by your strength that we will ever be able to do this. We can't be clean in our own strength. We need the covering of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And we can't live as lights in this darkness without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. So, Lord, we yield to you tonight, God, and we just simply ask you to be God in us, be God through us, be God in our homes, be God in our families. Push back the darkness that wants to destroy your life and your light in our homes and marriages and children, my God, physical bodies. We ask you to stretch your hand out and heal tonight. Heal miraculously people who are trusting for the victory that only you can bring. 
And Father, we thank you for these things. God, help me tonight to share your word in a way that people can understand it. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Prophet Isaiah speaks these words in chapter 55. He says, ho, or listen, or hark, or pay special attention. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall have. So three times he says, listen carefully, incline your ear and hear. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I've given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. And surely you shall call a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Now, this particular passage in the, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, here's what I want it, to, it's like every once in a while in the Old Testament, God just parts the curtain and gives, gives a glimpse into something that was that's available to people, something that was, was coming, something that was too wonderful to even understand. You see, the whole system, the whole religious system that the people of this time were under is a system of human effort. It's a system of, of money. It's a system of trying to, to, to be clean, of trying to find meaning in life all through human effort. You remember the, the original sin in the Garden of Eden when the devil came in, he sowed something in humanity and the thought that he sowed in Adam and Eve and subsequently in all of their ancestors, that would include you and I, the thought that is the, the, the feed source, the food source of the sin nature in man is that without God, we can be godly. Without God, we can be actually as God is and we can become arbiters of our own future. We can start judging. We can say this is good and this is evil. According to our own heart, we can be just as God is. And isn't that the besetting sin of this particular generation? But there were certain people, even under that Old Testament system, that, that, that really thirsted, that really wanted to be right with God. But, but it, 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 it cost something. You, you had to buy a lamb. You had to buy a goat. You had to bring a calf. You, if you were poor, you had to bring in turtle doves. Everybody had to pay a price. You had to bring in wheat. You had to bring in barley. You had to bring all these offerings unto God. And, and eventually, people would simply, I think, go bankrupt in one way or another. A lot of, a lot of people just didn't have the wealth and the resource to, to keep up this religious system. They, they, they tried as best as they could. Could you, could you imagine being part of that system in that day? You, you really want to walk with God. You want a living relationship with God. And, but every time you sinned, every time you failed, every time you faltered, you, you had to buy another lamb. You had to go back to the temple in Solomon's day and buy another goat and buy more doves, and you had to go into the priest and go through all the ritual cleansings, and, and you had to sacrifice this, this offering at the altar so that you could feel that you were in right relationship with God, only to go out and sin again. And know, knowing that sin separates from God, having to go back, and, and, and it was a, a system of, of such rigidity. It was a, because, of course, remember, Paul the Apostle says this whole religious system was like a schoolmaster teaching us that we needed a savior. We can't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves even with the best of intentions. We can't save ourselves with, with all of the human effort we put into trying to change. We literally can't change our nature. We can't change what we are. And then suddenly, every once in a while, all through the Old Testament, right in the middle of Isaiah warning the nation about judgment and, and talking about a lot of things that pertain to this Old Testament legal system of religion, every once in a while the curtain just parted 
and, and an invitation came. And it, it must have seemed so incredulous to the people who were part of this system. And he says, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. In other words, here's what the invitation was. God, all through the Old Testament, is peeking through this canopy of, of human effort, trying to be godly without God. And he peeks through and he says, are, are you exhausted yet? Are you tired now of trying to be God in your own strength? Are you tired of trying to be good in your own strength? Are you tired of, of all the places you spend your money looking for joy and looking for substance and looking for meaning, even religious places where you do these things? Have you, have you, are you still thirsty? Have you found what you're looking for? And he gives an invitation. He says, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. And the wine always speaks of joy. It's, it's at a wedding feast in Cana that Jesus first turned water into wine. It's, it's, it speaks of, of this interior joy, this, this celebration. And milk speaks of substance and provision. So God is saying, come and find joy and come and find provision. Come and find meaning for your life without money and without price. It, it would have been so foreign to the people of this time. And sometimes, sadly, it's foreign to us. We try harder. We read more. We want to be better. We make promises we can't keep. We tell people we're going to change. We promise ourselves we're not going to do the same old things that we've done for most of our life, only to fail and fall, and then somehow try to maybe purchase our way back into the favor of God, which is exactly what these people of this time spend a lot of their time doing. And he says, why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Why are you putting all this effort into something that doesn't satisfy? And your wages for that which does not satisfy, your, your, all your effort is, is, is going into this this failing, in a sense, approach to God, which is never going to bring you into any sort of victory. Then he goes on and he says, now listen carefully to me. Then the next verse he says, incline your ear to me. Hear me and your soul shall live. And so the people would have been, it, it, when they would read these words of Isaiah and they say, what, what in heaven's name could this man be talking about? What is it that God wants to speak what is he wanting me to listen carefully to and, and give him my best listening ear? What is, he, what is he wanting me to hear with the promise tagged onto it that my soul will live? That I won't have to live in this constant state of defeat any longer? That I, I won't have to get up in the morning depressed and despairing? Where, where is this place of wine and milk? Where is this place of joy and abundance? And the honest man, now the, the, the man who still thinks he can earn favor with God will probably not be able to hear this. But the man or woman who just says, I, I can't go on, I, I don't know what to do with life, I'm, I'm done, I'm failing, I'm faltering, I feel like a whisper in the dust and I, I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. It's this man, it's this person, this woman, that suddenly the voice of God says, come if you're still thirsty. I have something for you. I have an abundance to give you. I have joy to give you that you can't produce in any amount of your own human effort. I'll give you a joy that's deeper than your deepest satisfaction when you felt good in my presence because you know that that good feeling doesn't last forever. And he says, I will make an everlasting covenant. I'll make a promise to you, he says, that I won't break. Amazing. I'll make a covenant with you. When you made a covenant in the Old Testament, it was made with blood. Do you understand? He says, I'll make a blood covenant with you. That's what he's saying. I'll do something for you that you can't do for yourself. And what I'm about to do is going to be like living water to you. It's going to be a source of eternal joy. It's going to be a place of abundance, and you don't get it with human effort. You don't get it with human resource. You don't get it by making promises. You don't get it by anything you can bring to God. It's only when you open your heart and let God bring something to you. Listen to me, he says. Hear me on this. I'll make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I've given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. 
Surely you will call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Now, this is, this is on a whole bunch of different levels, but let me try to make it as simple as I can. The sure mercies of David, of course, David is in the lineage uh, that leads to Jesus Christ. We, we know that. He's the Christ type in the Old Testament. But there's something about David. God says, I'm going to make a covenant with you, and, and let's look at David as an example of what I'm willing to do for you. And the people knew the story of David. It meant something to them because they understood that even as a boy, the Spirit of God came upon him, and he was given the power of God to defeat that which should have defeated him. He destroyed a lion. He destroyed a bear. He was, he was given courage far beyond his years. He was given the ability to worship to the point where the devil would be driven away from a king who had backslidden and fallen away from God. He was able to go into a valley as a teenager and take on a giant who was ten times his superior in the natural and defeat him by the power of God. He was anointed with oil from on high by the prophet Samuel. The Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. And yes, even though he had to go through difficulty, trials, and valleys, he remained a man upon whom sat the Spirit of Almighty God. And he finished his life in victory. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And the prophet, God said to the prophet Isaiah, I gave him as a witness to you of what I am able and willing to do. All nations who don't know you will run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. God says, I will do something in you so powerful that people who will hear about it and come to you and want to hear your story. They'll want to know what I've done for you. And this, I believe, is going to be the testimony of this last day generation. This last moment of time, church age, where so many people are so down. So many people are so thirsty. They're so hungry. They're so tired. They're so sick of trying to be holy in their own strength. They've come to the place where perhaps, just perhaps, their ears are now open. They're willing to hear something that God's been willing to give for a long, long time. But we just, we have to sometimes exhaust our own efforts. We, we have to get to the end of what we think we can do for God to finally realize we can't do anything for Him. We have to now turn to Him and let Him do something for us. You ask me, is there a New Testament type of this particular Old Testament story? Yes, there is. In the book of John, just let me read it to you, chapter 7, they had been celebrating for eight days a feast. The, the, the Jewish people would gather every year, and for eight days they would celebrate various feasts. But the, one of the, the larger feasts they celebrated was called the Feast of Tabernacles. So a feast where they remembered the goodness of God to bring them out of captivity and bring them through a, a wilderness experience and to, to provide for them bread from heaven and give them water out of a rock and for, for eight consecutive days, there was a specific ceremony that was done at this time where the, one of the priests he would take water that was considered holy out of a, a well, and he would bring it, and there was a lot of pomp and ceremony surrounding this, and the, the, the priest would bring it, and he would pour this pitcher of water out upon the altar, reminding the people that God, in their wilderness experience, gave them water out of a rock. Reminding them of the faithfulness of God. And the people would look at this and they would be thinking, as we are tonight, God, you have been faithful to people in the past. You, you've been faithful to, to people who have trusted in you. And it was at the last day, probably after the last pouring out of the last picture in the last ceremony, that Jesus Christ himself stands up and cries out, If anyone is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. If you're tired of just talking about what people did in the past, we're so thankful for the past. We're so thankful for previous spiritual awakenings in various countries and places throughout the world. We're so thankful for the testimonies of, the, of those that God has fed living water in impossible places. We're, we're very, very thankful for the history. 
of what we read in the scriptures and how he poured out his spirit on 120 failures in an upper room. We're so thankful in Acts chapter 4 that when they were being threatened by a godless society that they prayed and the place was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They spoke the words with boldness and great signs and wonders were done in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We're so thankful for the past, but we are thirsty because we don't live there. We live here today, and we need the power of God the very same way they needed his power back then. Jesus stood in the midst of all the remembrance of the past, and he said, if you're still thirsty, come to me. It's the cry of Isaiah, ho, everyone who's thirsty, ho, you who have no money, ho, you who don't have the strength and you don't have the resource anymore to live in victory, you who have no joy, you who have no power, you don't have a reason to live, come to me now. Jesus said in John 7, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink, and he who believes in me, as the scripture have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. It won't be a rock anymore. There will be living water in you that will flow through you and give drink to those all around you. This he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus Christ was not yet glorified. Are you thirsty? I want to ask you tonight, sitting in your home, groups of people that are gathered, individuals, kids in a park on your cell phone, are you thirsty? Are you tired of trying to do good and be good? Are you trying to, tired of looking for joy in places where it, it's not found? And if you do find it, it doesn't last. Are you tired of, of having a, a listlessness in your heart, in your life? You, you don't even know what your life is about and, and what it is. What is your purpose? God says, listen to me now. Come to me now. Give me your best ear. And if you will listen to me, your soul will live. I'll make a covenant with you. And look to David, the king, as a type of what I'm able to do. I'll take you in your youth. I'll take you in your weakness. I'll help you when you fail. I'll carry you when you can't go forward. I'll give you strength when you don't know what your future is going to hold, and I'll do something in you so profound that people will come from everywhere and ask you for a reason for the hope that is now in you. You see, God says, I will be your source of strength. I'll be your life. I'll be your living water. Don't bring a price in your hand for this. You can't afford it. By the way, it's free anyway. You don't need to buy it. I'm willing to give it to you. I'm willing to give it to you freely. All you have to do is come to me. Then he says in verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Don't put this off for another day. Don't put it off for another week. Don't put it off for another hour. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The scripture says in the book of Hebrews today, if you can hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't put it away for another day. For the, as, the more often you put away this call of God, the duller your hearing will become to hearing his voice calling you. Seek him while he is near. Call upon him. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord. Simply just admit what you are. Admit your failure. You know, for a lot of people tonight, you're saying, well, that's not a problem. I, I've, I've got that down really good. I know what I am. And I really do appreciate, we do appreciate the honesty in a lot of the prayer requests coming in from around the world. You're not playing games with the Holy God. You're not trying to buy your way into his favor anymore. You know what you are. So this message is for you. It's for the downtrodden, it's for the oppressed, it's for the weary, it's for the tired, it's for the bankrupt, it's for the broke, it's for the failure, it's for the person who can't get up and can't get out on their own. This message is for you. This call of God is for you. It's for the people who have no money, no more resource, 
I don't know what to do, and I don't know how I'm ever going to get to where I need to go. Forsake your way. Forsake your old thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. He who believes on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his inner parts, his belly, shall flow rivers of living water. It's the Spirit of God coming and taking up residence inside your earthly body. This is the wine. This is the milk. This is the presence of God that you can't buy your way into. You only get it when you bend your knee to God. You only get this living relationship with God when you confess with your mouth that he's now your Lord and your Savior, and you just admit your condition and say, God, I can't save myself. I can't buy my way into your favor. I, I can't be, I've tried to be good, I can't. I've tried to get up, I can't walk. I've tried to stay steady, and I'm not. And I'm just done. You see, great revivals throughout history, that means a turnings to God, happen at these moments in history when people just know that they're done. They're, they're done, the religiousness. They're done playing the religious game. They're, t- they're done going to church and pretending they're in victory. They're done. You say, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to try to pretend that I'm living in victory and I'm not going to try to buy my way into the favor of God. My life is a mess. My family is broken apart. I'm troubled and struggling in my mind and so I'm just done with all of this and now my ears are open. God Almighty, if there's ever going to be a change in my life, it's going to be you that brings it about. Oh, are you still thirsty, he says. Come to me and drink. That's what the cross is all about. The cross was God's invitation to come into a living relationship with him, confessing your sin, admitting your condition, believing that Jesus Christ died on a cross to pay the price for your sin, believing that his hands are stretched out towards you, saying, here, just come to me now and let me forgive you, for I will abundantly pardon you, as the Scripture says. And inviting God through the Holy Spirit to come into your life and be that source of living water that you have always longed for. I'm going to ask you tonight to pray with me. Those that are at home and those in the sanctuary are going to pray with me tonight too, well, as well in our campus church here at uh, our Bible school. And I'm just going to ask you to pray this simple prayer. And for the sake of the person who needs to pray it, everyone in their home group, their home fellowship, pray it together. For the sake of the man or woman who's maybe come into your midst that you've invited to be part of this meeting tonight that needs to receive Christ as Savior. This is a a moment that will change your life. This is a moment where God will do something so powerful that your family and others will begin to take notice and want to know what it is that has happened to you. I want you to pray with me and just open your heart to the forgiveness of God. Just say these words after me. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for loving me. Thank you for wanting me. In all of my brokenness, in all my failure, I've tried to be good. I can't. I need something greater than my own heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for going to a cross, paying the price for the wrong I have done so that I can come back into relationship with God. You promised me living water. And so tonight, I take you at your word. I've listened to you, Lord. I've listened to your word. I've inclined my ear. And I've received your promise. So I'm asking you to forgive me, to be the Lord of my life, and to make me into the person 
that only you can. I'm asking for the strength to glorify you in my life. I'm asking you for miracles in my home, in my family, and in my community. Jesus Christ, tonight, I make you Lord of my life. I choose to trust you. You haven't failed others, and you won't fail me. From this day forward, I belong to you, and you belong to me. Give me the grace now to never turn back and to listen to your promises. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, the Bible says that if, Jesus actually said it, that if, if you prayed that prayer tonight, the angels in heaven are now rejoicing over you. <laughs> and the water that flowed out of a rock to God's people to give them a drink in the wilderness is now flowing into you through Jesus Christ and will flow through you to others around you. By the grace of Almighty God, your life will never, ever be the same again. This is going to be a great day for you and for your family. And I want to remind those that are part of these groups tonight to stay. And if somebody in your midst has given their lives to Christ, Put your hands on the shoulder of that man or that woman or that young person and pray that they might be filled with the Spirit of God. And so, Father, tonight, I just ask you to seal with the Holy Spirit of promise, God, that which has happened in people's hearts. Lord, you have an end-time army, God, that's going to stun the world. One more time, and we've heard it. One more time, you're just going to raise up the least likely people in this society, God. And your name is going to be glorified again by what you do, not what we do for you, but what you do through us to bring your own name to glory. Thank you for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Now, in just a moment, we're going to go to the communion table. We're going to celebrate communion together, and we're going to celebrate the new birth that's happened in many, many people's lives tonight. If you have made that decision, Please text in the word decided, decided to 51,000. So you can text that on your phone, 51,000, and text in the word decided. And somebody from Times Square Church will be in touch with you and will let you know how you can start this new walk with God. Love you. God bless you. We'll be back in just a moment. It was my cross you bore. So I could live in the freedom you died for. And now my life is yours. I stand amazed of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus.
For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night on which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. For you. And you, and you, and you. And he said, Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Remember, he talked about making a covenant. It's my promise to you. There's no way God could have ever shown in any greater measure how he loved you, but to allow his son's blood to be shed on a cross to bring you back home to him. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for hope. Thank you for strength. Thank you for meaning and purpose. Thank you for joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for living water. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for the, the young men and women and the older men and women and the children that gave their lives to you tonight, God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, we just want to join the angels in heaven now, just shouting around about the throne of God. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory, God, for all that you're doing, Lord. This is a marvelous day, Lord. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Now remember, if you've given your life to Christ tonight, it would be so nice to see a testimony of that. Just a one-minute testimony on your cell phone and send it to us at testimony at tsc.nyc. Testimony at tsc.nyc. Just let us know you'd like to do that or just contact us. We'll get immediately back to you and tell you how to do that so that we can get it up on the screen here. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We just have a sense in our hearts, God, that you've done something profound tonight. We're, we're not on the other end of the camera all around the world, but you've done something, God, for we hear the angels tonight. I hear them singing. There's a shout in heaven over even one soul that's come to Christ, God. So we thank you so much. And we give you praise and glory. Remember, Times Square Church is online every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and we're back here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time from our Bible school in Grantville, Pennsylvania. We love you so much. See you shortly. God bless you. Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. Cancel. He canceled my debt. He called me his friend. I swim death. I swim death was arrested and my life began. We celebrate your grace tonight. Oh, your grace so free. Wash his Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross And though darkness rejoices, though heaven had lost This is Jesus But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand That's when death, that's when death
Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. We'll see you next week.